Hello, my esteemed colleagues and admired amigos. I am Buck WSR Weezer, putting the do into do-it-yourself. And our do-it-yourself project today, once again, finds us here with the 1998 Bounder. Got a ladder leaning across the front because today I am going to replace those marking lights across the top front, the orange ones, and also the ones that across the back that are red. Now the story is that I just for the fun of it decided to try them out and I realized most of them were not lighting up. And I thought, ah, I just need some new bulbs. But you know what I did is when I went up there and I started in the back, when I went up there, I pulled the bulbs out, tested all the bulbs separately with a 12 volt battery and a couple of wires, and they all worked. So the problem really was not the bulbs. Now you can see here that I've already removed the five red marking lights across the back here at the top. You can see the, about a one inch hole and the wires sticking out. So it really wasn't the problem with the bulbs. Um, it was just the, the fixtures themselves were not working very well. And I decided to change them out. So this package arrived today from eTrailer.com. And I purchased six of each color. The red for the back. And the orange for the front. There's five on the front, five on the back. I bought an extra one of each. So these are pretty simple and very inexpensive. They were two or three dollars a piece. And pretty much the same shape and style of what was up there. So we're gonna install those today. What I'm gonna do is start here at the front and show you how to take down the old ones. Clean it off up there, maybe scrape off some of the old sealant around the perimeter of each one and get ready to install the new ones. Okay, so the difficulty for me here will be standing on a ladder, holding a camera, trying not to fall, and working with one hand. But it's easy enough to pry the cover off. Someone has previously done some sealant, so some old, uh, looks like clear silicone caulk around them. So prying some of that out of the way. Now these are held on slightly differently than the ones in the back because I have these uh, screws and nuts these bolts small bolts and nuts the back they were just riveted into the material so this one's a little bit interesting I gotta go find me a, a nut driver the right size socket you know a couple of these actually were filled with water when I popped the lens cover off you know that can't be good the water ran down the front here of the RV so these are really kind of nasty and dirty. I've got some, uh, wanted to spray some of this, uh, some of these bolts and, and nuts are rusty. I was gonna spray just a little bit here. And down here. All right. Again, sorry, I'm trying to film this while standing on a ladder and work with one hand. All right, so we got the nut driver. It's a strange size. These are 1132. And not sure it's coming off because the whole bolt might be spinning. Which 
what I think is happening. So I might have to get a little bit more creative in getting these off. But being up here now and seeing the mess that they are, and how they were filled with water and debris, I am glad that I'm going to change them out. It was totally different in the back, um, where there were just some simple rivets. I put a screwdriver behind each of the blend, uh, each of the uh, fixtures, and they just sort of popped right out. Well, here we are at the front still, and I managed to get one of these off, but it wasn't easy. These are the nuts are rusted to these bolts. So what I realize is these bolts serve not just as to secure the little light fixture to the vehicle, but also there's your, 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 uh, your positive and negative. So I wasn't able to get that off in the traditional fashion. I pretty much broke it into a million pieces and cut it up with these dikes and pulled it off. But turned on the switch and brought out the... Uh, brought out the, the uh, voltage tester to prove my point so should have voltage here uh, 11.05 so we're getting voltage these these serve then not just to secure the fixture to the vehicle but also your supply so of electricity so my plan is since I can't get these off and also based on the style of fixture that I just bought, I'm gonna have to drill about a one inch hole here and somehow figure out how to get these off and get access to the wires that are behind there. I really don't think I can get access from the inside. Not without going through a big rigmarole. So we're gonna give that a try. Okay. Wish me luck here. Okay, so feeling the need to hold on to the ladder with at least one hand, I put the camera down and finished drilling without you. And then what I did is, on this bolt here, I took a, took a pair of pliers and was able to snip off the front of it, push it in, and then fished out the wire that was connected to the other end. So now I gotta do the same on this side. Then I'll have my two wires, my, my negative and my positive, um, and we'll be able to put up the new fixtures. All right, so here's our two wires. Our white is the negative, brown's a positive, and I'm gonna connect them onto the end of this. This is the new fixture. So what's nice is the holes on this new fixture to fasten it to the vehicle, line up perfectly, three inch centers with these two holes that are there already. So what I'm gonna do is make my connections. I'm gonna cut these uh, eye connectors off and we're gonna splice the ends to this wire, these wires. And it really doesn't matter on our light fixture which, is, really which is negative and which is positive. I'm going to do that next, and I'm planning to use these crimp connectors here. Probably those red ones right here to make our splice. And then they'll get pushed back into the cab, and we'll be able to fasten the fixture in place. All right, so there's my connections. That's good. They're going back inside. And that's going right up there like that. 
Now, I am going to get some silicone sealant. And I think what I'm going to try here is I've got some anchors. These guys right here. I don't even know what I got them from. But I think these might actually work really good in combination with the sealant to hold these in place. So I'm going to go grab the sealant, get these in place, and we'll uh, seal around it. And this one will be done. You know what I really should do first? I should go turn the uh, turn the light switch on and make sure it works right. Oh, look, it works. All right, so now I'm ready to fasten it with that assurance that it's actually working. Hey, can you do me a favor? Yep. Can you just go in and turn off the headlights? That will save me a trip up and down this ladder. All right. I've got some DAP white 100% waterproof, 100% silicone. Okay, so these fasteners go in like so. Fasten in like that. Probably need to drive them just a little bit further, but that is that is nice and tight right now. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna seal around the perimeter. And I'm also gonna seal a little bit around this socket. And also with two hands and be more careful when I'm not holding the camera, drive these in just a little bit more. All right, he's in. Just a matter of popping. I, I tried to use a, a real generous amount of sealant around the perimeter. Hopefully that will be good and that will be nice and dry. These fasteners worked really good. They're holding it in there very firmly. That feels good to me. And then uh, I'll come back later and pop on the cover. So the front's turning out to be a little bit more of a challenge, but it's doable here on the front. I got one, two, three, four more to do here. So I'll work on that. I'll also show you a little bit in the back why it's a little easier back there. I wanted to show you one of the installs here at the back and why it's easier than the front. For one thing, we already have our big hole in the center all the way along here. I don't think water infiltration is as big of a, a risk here at the back. There's one thing, you're not tuck, trucking down the highway in reverse at 60 miles an hour in a rainstorm. Also, it's under this lip here, so they're a little bit more protected. Also, here on the, on the ends, there's two mounting screws already going into this plastic piece, this plastic cap. So it's going to be very easy to install this red guy right here at the back. Okay. So we're gonna tuck our wires back in. Like so. are held on with the Phillips head screws so that makes it really really easy
All right, little sealant, and this guy is good to go. All right, that one's done. That one took a small fraction of the time as compared to the one we did on the front. And it's lit up. That's gonna look good. All right, so I've got a few more to do here. And then when the project's over, I'll bring you back in for one final look. Back to work. Okay, it's starting to get a little dark out, but they are, there's the five across the back, and they're all lit up. And that looks so much better. Very happy with that. There we are also across the front. That looks pretty good. Certainly a lot better. And I will be happy to cruise down the highway with all our running lights and marking lights functioning. Thanks for joining me on this project. Hope that was of some inspiration and help to you. Buck WSR Weezer saying I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.